Hey everybody, today I'm talking about Let's Waltz, which is the first and only expansion to one of my favorite Euro games of all time, Grand Austria Hotel. Now this is a modular expansion with quite a bit going on, so let's talk about what each of those modules has to offer. So the first module to this expansion is what I would consider the focus point and as you probably assume from the actual name of the expansion, let's waltz. This is all about ballroom. So this is the Vienna ballroom expansion where in addition to the normal setup, you are going to add a number of these ballrooms and also these practice halls depending on the player count. Now there's a lot of kind of side pieces which mesh into these such as new objective cards, new guests and even a new resources resource which is champagne which is particularly hard to get hold of you've also got some new staff cards which synergize with this new mechanism so what this um, module has to offer is that instead of sending guests to their rooms as you would do as normal once they've been fed and watered, this one you have the option to send them to these different ballrooms. And to do that, you are going to have to pay a fee of champagne. So for example, you know, you'd have to pay one champagne in order to get it on this row here, or two on this row and three on this row. And when you get it on these rows, you're going to get a reward such as you know, going up the emperor track or getting resources shutting rooms off, just getting victory points, or even getting money. And um, also, whenever you deploy one of your um, one of your dances from your um, from your practice hall here the last one that you remove from each section you are going to get a reward again of the same kind of style and um, once you um, place them in that hall as I said you are going to get this reward here but also when it comes to scoring at the end of each um, at the end of each emperor phase when, when an emperor comes to score you are going to have a look at the relative ballroom and score some additional criteria at the top so for example this one here depending on the amount of dancers you have in this hall you are going to score this many points or even just um, you know, having majorities and all these different kind of things you'd probably come to expect with a Euro game like this. Um, in addition, if you do not deploy anybody in these ballrooms, then you are actually going to lose five victory points. So as you can probably tell, this expansion or this module changes the game quite dramatically and adds a new entire element of, um, of area control to the game that wasn't there before. And uh, if you like that style of thing, then you're probably going to welcome this addition. I would say that this does massively increase the footprint of the game. So you're going to need a bit more space in order to play this one. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind. And yeah, it adds a new layer of competition, a new tension in order to fill these spaces up because they are limited and you want to, do, to be deploying all of your dancers which are going to be filling these columns um, up in order to get as many points as possible and just offers a whole new pool of points to be obtained. The second module has to do with these VIPs or these celebrities. So you're going to have this lounge here and at any one time you're going to have a tile placed on each of these different spots here, all corresponding to a different dice colour. So as you can see you've got these red dice, you've got the uh, yellow one and the blue one. And they are going to replace three of the white dice uh, as you would normally would. And the cool thing about this is that whenever you draft one of these um, coloured die, you are going to get the ability of one of these celebrities for that entire round. And these can do some extremely powerful things, such as, you know, whenever you go up the Emperor track, you go up again. Or whenever you play a celebrity, or sorry, whenever you play a staff card, you get two, um, two dishes of your choice. Or, you know, fulfil um, guests up for one resource less or even um, prepare rooms for free. So they do a lot of cool things. And you've probably got some familiar faces here that you'd recognize, such as Albert Einstein, Charlotte Chaplin, even J.R.R. Tolkien there. Uh, you've got Gandhi, you've got um, uh, Puccini, Churchill, and all these really familiar faces. So I actually really like this module, and probably something that I would choose um, in every game, because I think this adds a lot of flavor to the game and um, has or really does increase your choices and lets you exploit some pretty powerful abilities. So a nice, fresh and innovative uh, module here that I've not seen anything quite like this one before. Module 3 is going to grant each player a unique hotel that they are going to have throughout the entire game. And these hotels are going to give you a unique player power to use and also going to determine which starting resources you have. Now these are actually auctioned off at the start of the game using your starting money and obviously the higher the bid the, um, the hotel is probably going to be slightly better. Um, and these do lots of cool things such as um, ramping up your collection bonuses when you complete a set of rooms, um, being able to give you a little bonus whenever you take your second die from the uh, drafting board. So you're going to combine up the values and get a reward depending on how high it is up that track. 
Um, this one here means that whenever you place your first room in a certain set of rooms, then you're gonna get another bonus or lets you give you the ability to manipulate the uh, values of these pip values on the, on the drafting board by moving them up or down one spot to give you a lot more flexibility or give you the ability to use one of these tokens when you complete a row or column in your hotel. And all these really cool things such as having an extra guest spot or having personal objectives so that other people can't take these objectives. And um, you can probably imagine that these add a lot of almost tailored strategy throughout the game. So if you have a uh, particular ability to feed your guests, for example, uh, you're gonna really wanna focus on getting those guests in your rooms. I would say that this is a real welcome addition. However, I probably would introduce this to every game I have and would play this with people who are extremely familiar with the game and know how to exploit these benefits to the maximum. Module four just changes the flow of the game. So instead of the standard snaking order where it goes player one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, this one reverts back to a standard clockwise player order. And the rules are going to balance that accordingly so that you start with different denominations of money. So the fourth player is gonna start with more money. But additionally, this extra board is going to be attached to the dice drafting board. Uh, and you're gonna have the ability to draft this skeleton key, which basically means that you will be the first player in the future rounds. And it also means that you can take any of the additional actions, but at a strength of one, and also get a dish of your choice. You are quite well compensated. And on top of all that, uh, depending on the new player order, uh, money is going to be distributed out. So, you know, the second player is not gonna get anything, the third player is gonna get a crone, and the fourth player is also gonna get two crones. So it, it basically just balances the game out, so you haven't got that downtime of that snaking order, which a lot of people did complain about in the original um, base game rules. Um, I don't think this is entirely necessary. I, I think maybe if I did ever get this game to the table with four players, then um, I would consider using this. But otherwise, I think I'll stick to the snaking order. And the fifth and final module to this expansion is simply more stuff. So you have a bunch of new staff cards, including ones with a brand new mechanism uh, depicted by this bell symbol here. And these will trigger once certain criteria has been fulfilled. So for example, uh, this tapster here will give you six crones once you've fulfilled an order, uh, a yellow guest with at least three, um, three wanted food or drink. So... I like that new mechanism as adds a new dimension to the game and adds something else you can focus on. You've got a bunch of other stuff here. You've got a new tile here that replaces the uh, the drafting board to add champagne into the mix. You've got new gold cards. You've got new emperor tiles, some that relate to some expansions, some, some that don't. And the same applies to these new guest cards as well. Um, again, some relating to expansions and some not. And if a solo game, if solo gaming is your thing, you've got a whole book called Dinner for One, which adds a bunch of different solo um, kind of scenarios that you can try out and um, things that you can try and achieve and beat. And um, to be honest, I've not looked into this one. I'm not much of a solo gamer. So if that's your thing, um, I recommend doing some digging into that. So yeah, overall, uh, this is a pretty much a one-stop shop for Grand Austria Hotel. Um, I think they've exploited everything they can now. Nothing else they can really explore. And I don't think you're ever going to complain that you're not going to have enough content for one of the best games ever made. So I'm really happy with this, this expansion. Um, I'm pretty sure that I won't play with all of it all the time. Of course, I'll chuck all the stuff in that I can seamlessly. Um, I'm very happy with that celebrities module. That's probably something I'll use um, almost all the time. But I think the uh, the waltzing expansion or the, uh, you know, the dance halls and um, some of the other stuff is going to be used a bit more circumstantially um, with maybe more uh, more experienced gamers and ones that are so familiar with the game and more comfortable with playing it. But yeah, loads of stuff here, loads to explore, loads to uh, sink your teeth into, and it's going to certainly get this game back to the table uh, repeated times and inject a hell of a lot of life into Grand Austria Hotel. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this um, little uh, run through all these modules. Uh, if you have, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.